On March 11, 2011, a massive earthquake and tsunami hit northeastern Japan. It triggered one of the worst nuclear accidents in history at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. This week, our series, Journey from Disaster, will look at the region and its people five years on. Cleaning up the plant is generating a serious problem of its own, huge quantities of contaminated water. The issue is affecting the livelihood of people who depend on the sea. NHK World's Takafumi Terui reports. Twice a week, fishermen from the city of Iwaki head out into Fukushima's coastal waters. Their port is 40 kilometers from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. We only handle products that have passed screening. They're safe and we hope people enjoy eating them. The fishermen conduct strict checks on the concentration of radioactive substances in each catch. They've set their own standard of 50 burkles per kilogram. That's even stricter than the national standard said to be the toughest in the world. This area was once renowned for offering one of the best catches around Japan. But five years has not been enough time for fishermen to restore that reputation. The problem is the water. People cannot be sure if it's as clean as it was before the nuclear accident. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi plant, Tokyo Electric Power Company, is struggling to control water contaminated with radioactive materials. Workers at the plant must keep the molten fuel at the plant cool. That requires injecting enormous quantities of water. And the volume increases as groundwater seeps into the plant. Huge amounts of contaminated water are being generated. Workers are pumping out the water. But since they cannot remove all the radioactive substances it contains, they have to store it in tanks on site. About 800,000 tons of water are now being stored. TEPCO officials are trying to limit the volume by keeping groundwater away from the reactor buildings. In May 2014, they started pumping it up before it could reach the buildings and releasing it into the ocean. They've also been working on measures to keep contaminated water from flowing into the sea. They installed a steel wall near the shore last year. Now the government and TEPCO officials are planning to build another wall made of ice. Pipes surrounding the reactor buildings descend 30 meters into the ground. Cooling liquid will be circulated through the pipes to freeze the soil around them. If all goes well, the result will be a huge 1.5 kilometer long wall of ice. But some people doubt the $300 million system will work. Satoshi Sato is a nuclear engineer. The frozen soil will melt if it's left on its own. This is just a temporary measure. It could melt one day. What will they do if some parts don't freeze? Ideally, it should be a solid wall that lasts a long time. A TEPCO official responsible for decommissioning the plant says they're making progress. We recognize there are concerns about using the ice wall in the long term, so we'll monitor it closely. We've implemented measures to respond to the contaminated water issue, and the ice wall is just one of them. We're working on a comprehensive approach. The fishermen of Fukushima are also keeping a close eye on the situation. They desperately hope it will be resolved as soon as possible so they can resume their former way of life out on the sea. Takahumi Terui, NHK World, Iwaki, Fukushima. Families of children diagnosed with thyroid cancer in Japan's northeastern Fukushima prefecture have formed a support group. They hope to use it to exchange information and share concerns over the disease. The 2011 earthquake and tsunami triggered one of the worst ever nuclear accidents at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. 
The disaster spread massive amounts of radioactive materials over a wide area. The government has been working to reduce radiation exposure, but still, people are concerned. Medical officials in Fukushima Prefecture have been giving health checkups to more than 380,000 children who are 18 years old or younger at the time of the nuclear accident. So far, 167 people have been diagnosed with cancer or are suspected to having the illness. The families announced the launch of the support group at a news conference. The fathers of two teenagers diagnosed with cancer joined the meeting via TV phone. One of them said anonymously he was shocked when he heard that his child had been diagnosed with cancer. The group comprises five families. They plan to recruit more members. A panel of experts appointed by the prefecture says it's unlikely the cases of cancer were caused by radiation. It says people have been exposed to relatively low amounts. Fukushima cover-up. Radiation still ruining Japanese lives. The Fukushima cover-up continues to be a problem of massive proportions for the Japanese. It was exactly five years ago in March, 11, on March 11, 2011, that Fukushima, Japan, suffered a massive nuclear catastrophe. Today on the Freedom Articles, I'd like to share a profound story of a personal experience of someone I know. This person ran into a group of Japanese women by a chance and happened to strike up a conversation about the Fukushima nuclear disaster and the Fukushima cover-up and goes along with it. The topic transformed the entire group and encounter into a, something deep, sad, and emotional, and very telling, with people having to abandon their properties and houses to move across country, and with babies suffering from higher cancer rates. The obvious after effects of Fukushima are all too real, despite Japanese government denial. Here's the story in their own words. Spontaneously, the Fukushima cover-up subject. Today, while on a boat ride, I sat next to a group of Japanese tourists, who were mostly all women, on a conscious tour honoring the sacredness of the area. For some inexplicable reason, I felt compelled to lean forward and start a conversation with them, mostly telling them how concerned I was by, and my fellow community were for their well-being. After the horrible nuclear catastrophe at Fukushima, a disaster which continues to poison the oceans and the entire planet. Surprisingly, even to myself, my eyes swelled uh, up with tears as I told them how we had prayed for them and ask what they themselves have done to change their eating and lifestyles since the Fukushima disaster. Something deeply special happened in an instant. Even though only one of, of them spoke English well, the group of us, seven women, became heart-bounded, uh, heart-bonded, excuse me, in a more instantaneous way than I've ever experienced. Before, two of the ladies started crying profoundly, while all of the others, women, had a minimum tears running down their faces. There was a wave of authenticity, deep emotion, and that overtook a huge section of the boat that made everything else simply disappear. Sisters Without Borders, who all shared the stories of the two women who had the, had the clo uh, closest ties to the Fukushima. One of the two had had to pack up her house and family and move across the country despite the Japanese government telling, that, telling her she did not need to move and that they were safe to stay in Fukushima. The other woman's parents still live there, and although they believed the mainstream version of their safety, they seem to be aware of the extent of the Fukushima cover-up, and to have a better idea of the danger they were in. Fukushima's high cancer rates for babies. She sobbed in that unique Japanese way, her face buried in a handkerchief. They told me stories of babies with higher cancer rates. We hugged deeply. The, this unspeakable disaster is still happening, yet, the government and most of the country have gone on as if nothing happened. Many st studies have confirmed that this aspect of the Fukushima cover-up, such as recent one with which concluded the children living near the Fukushima nuclear meltdown, have been diagnosed with thyroid cancer up to 20 to 50 times that of children elsewhere. By now, a crowd had gathered. There was a swarming circle of tender-hearted Japanese women leaning over seats to get closer, smiling. I was saying, Aragato, and thank you countless times. I was so appreciative for their willingness to step outside of their traditionally narrow Japanese box. That encourages them to strictly stay in line with what they are told to do and feel. They boldly opened their hearts 
to the stranger and poured out their tears as I held them. It is my understanding of Japanese culture that they are generally told to stuff their emotions. Yet these women let her beautiful let their beautiful hearts shine. I was I am deeply grateful to all of these new sisters and the authentic love, joy, and depth that they have shared with me today. Conclusion: Fukushima radiation is real, and a truth-telling government is rare. Fukushima radiation and the Fukushima cover-up are both ongoing and real. If, as some researchers have suggested, it was the Israeli Mossad who determined the nukes, who detonated the nukes, and that caused the explosion, it was a crime against humanity. However, the ensuing group, uh, the ensuing cover-up by TEPCO and the Japanese government was equally a crime against humanity. Fukushima was, and still is, far worse than Chernobyl. Tokyo farmland has been tested numerous times and shown to have high levels of radiation. Even though Tokyo is hundreds of kilometers away from Fukushima, countless people have lost their, their houses, land, livelihood, and lives, while the government continues its denial. It's a shocking lesson about the dangers of nuclear power and the insanity of those who would pursue profit and power over people, no matter what the cost. And, you know, I'm concerned about the people of America and Canada, that the Fukushima has not slowed down any. It's still going. And uh, the fish in the ocean, in the ocean and, and the Pacific are all getting sick. And uh, we can't eat fish. We shouldn't eat fish out of the Pacific. And uh, anyway, it, it's, uh, it's something we need to be aware of. Uh, it's in the atmosphere. It's uh, all the Western United, Western United States cities are in danger, really, from what my understanding is. So we need to be careful. We need to stay out of the rain whenever possible. If we're in the rain, we need to take a shower when we get home or get out of the rain. And we need to have an umbrella. And uh, that's in snow or rain because it, the radiation seems to be in a higher elevation and comes down with the rain when it comes down. And so anyway, uh, we shouldn't be drinking rain rainwater. Uh, the crops that we're eating that is raised above ground uh, are probably dangerous. We need to get a controlled environment way of raising crops. And uh, so anyway, uh, maybe hydrophonics and, and uh, aquaphonics and all those type of things. Uh, but we need to change our lifestyles and we need to start thinking about it quickly. God bless each one of you. Stay safe. Let's get something done. Thank you so much. One of the hardest hit places on the coast was the city of Likuzen, Takata. NHK World's Minori Takao shows us how residents are spending this important day and how the city has changed over the past five years. At 2.46 p.m., the exact time the earthquake struck, people in Likuzen, Takata took a moment to pray for those who were lost in the disaster. A memorial service was held in a newly constructed community hall. Hundreds of visitors paid their respects. Mikuzen Takata is now known for this site, the lone standing pine tree. But this isn't what the place looked like five years ago. Before the disaster, a grove of 70,000 pine trees stood here. It was landscape residents were proud of and something that attracted tourists from across the country. The city center by the bay was packed with shops, schools and neighborhoods. But on March 11, 2011, all of that was wiped out as tsunami as high as 17 meters gushed inland. Of a community of about 24,000, over 1,800 people died or went missing. Just one tree from the pine grove initially survived the destruction, and it became a symbol of hope. And now, efforts are being made to recreate the grove itself. Members of a local nonprofit organization are growing seedlings in the mountains. Some of them were actually collected from the original pine trees. And in about three years, they will replant them alongside the lone miracle pine. Throughout the city, we're beginning to see some visible signs of recovery. Thousands of tons of soil have been piled up, and they're made into mounds. They're elevating that because the land here by the coast sank due to the earthquake and tsunami. A diorama is now on display in the community hall, showing what the city center will look like in three years. Construction of the main shopping area will start this summer, and other facilities will follow. I talked to this woman about the recovery process. Most people might think the past five years have gone by quickly. But for me, recovery is still a long way off. I want to help rebuild the city, 
so that it's a place where children will be happy to be born. For residents, the past five years have been a time of sorrow and a test of patience. They're hoping the recovery efforts will give them a clearer view of their future and a sense of community that was lost. Minori Takao, NHK World, Bikuzen Takata. A top UN official has told NHK he hopes the international community will benefit from Japan's experience of earthquakes and tsunami. <laughs> Robert Glasser, the special representative of the UN Secretary General for Disaster Risk Reduction, attended a public ceremony in Tokyo to remember victims of the catastrophes. This is such, a, such an amazing, amazingly competent, intelligent, technologically advanced society that is living in such a dangerous place with so many disasters, whether it's earthquakes, tsunamis. Japan is almost uniquely position to do that, to play that role. Glasser said Japan's 2011 earthquake, tsunami and nuclear meltdowns raised global awareness of natural disasters. He said people should recognize the Fukushima nuclear crisis as an opportunity to make improvements. UN Secretary General Pan Ki-moon also extended his condo condolences to the victims. He said Japan has shown the world the importance of learning from past calamities so as to prepare for the future. Anti-nuclear protesters gathered in Taiwan's capital, Taipei, on Saturday. They held a rally to mark the fifth anniversary of the 2011 nuclear disaster at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in Japan. <laughs> Environmental groups and people living near nuclear plants demanded a halt to construction of a new facility and the shutdown of existing ones. I am concerned about nuclear accident. Taiwan should adopt renewable energy technologies. Three nuclear plants are currently operating in Taiwan. Last year, they accounted for around 16 percent of its total power output. In the wake of Japan's nuclear accident five years ago, many people in Taiwan have raised concerns about safety. This has resulted in a freeze on the construction of a fourth plant near Taipei.
loving you more than each day before. Soul like a spring with new life in everything. Your hope is lifting me up through the blue and green of our whole world. Since the Grand Canyon, I've dreamt of eating one taste of heaven while I'm still breathing, and then you appear. Oh, straight out of nowhere, here by the ocean, we start the feeling paradise in motion. And you are the reason I release my fear. I've known you for a thousand years. Our whole world circling You're my whole world They desperately hope it will be resolved as soon as possible so they can resume their former way of life out on the sea. Takahumi Terui, NHK World, Iwaki, Fukushima.